Hello everyone, welcome to Racing PCs. Today we are going to look into a set of course, a graphics settings. The settings that allow the benchmark on the channel to be the way they are. Okay, so this is uh, not going to be an... Ex it's going to be very long because <laughs> Because of the of the of the size and depth of the content manager and CSP settings, but uh, bear in mind there are too many settings. It's hard to be an expert in all of those things. So it, this wants to be an I you know a, a baseline and wants to be wants to give ideas on how to handle the settings in a set of course. Okay, just a quick recap. We are again in sim racing up down there because when you put together the right components, install Windows the right way, you pick the right version of the GPU driver and you set exactly the driver as it should be set, then uh, you set up the application settings correctly and have the correct monitor, then all together means a lot of frames. A lot of frames more than just doing by chance, okay? Um, let's have a look. Let's get into it. Assetto Corsa, the good old Assetto Corsa settings, video settings, okay? For the purpose of this video, I am assuming you already have installed Content Shade Patcher, Content Manager, CSP, CSP and obviously uh, Pure. Okay, so this is not about installing those. I'm assuming you already have those. Okay. So. A couple of things, we go first to the content manager general and we check for update, okay. And this is the latest, okay. So there's no new version. This is the content manager. And then in custom shader patch, in about an update, I have the 023 preview one installed. There is also the possibility to install automatically the free updates, okay? Without the preview though, without the rain. The preview means you have access to the weather and the rain, okay? So I have the preview version. And then the last thing we want to check is in weather effects. We have weather style and we have the 0252 pure installed, okay, which is the default. Okay. So let's start from a set of course of video. By no means, first of all, this is an, an exhaustive um, guide on how to use all the possibilities of the content manager. This is too much. The possible settings, crossing, interpolation between your choices, desires, sensibilities is too wide. All right. But um, so let's use this guide as a, you know, as a baseline, as a point of view, as a also a baseline to look and read at the benchmark I publish on the on the channel. So the benchmark I publish are um, achieved by using these settings. Okay. So first of all, we go through the single screen and let's load this. Okay, let's load this. We have single screen and then we have full screen. For screen is faster, okay. And then we have the resolution of the monitor. And in this case, I want to use as an example what I'm using for 
the uh, capturing, which is 2560-1440. Let's select that. This is the native resolution of your monitor. The native resolution of your monitor, okay? And we want to use fixed resolution automatically. This is going to take care of the aspect ratio, okay? Vertical synchronization must be off at all times. This is this is old technology, all right? And at the moment, we are not limiting frame rate. All right? Then we go to quality, and I use MSAA four times. Let's say this is an old engine, and um, it's not particularly... Well, it feels old, even though there is CSP and Pure installed, but it's, it doesn't have a particular issue with anti-aliasing, so I would not suggest 8 times MSA, but 4 is enough. I've seen an isotropic filtering, it's indeed turned off. And it is turned off because because we are turning Manage settings, program settings. We select a set of cores and we go to 16 per in the video driver of the video card. This is more efficient, better looking. We go like this, okay? A set of cores, manage 3D settings program settings which are just for the application a set of course from the menu if it is not on the menu you have to select a set of course dot exe from adding it and picking okay and then you go to browse to the to the folder but the Content Manager is able to find a set of courses, so you pick it from there. I'm going to tell you just one thing today. The anisotropy filtering needs to be 16 pair on the NVIDIA control panel. Okay, let's switch it off and off in the application. World detail is very high. It's not that maximum. It's just one below maximum. It's enough elements on the track. This is about the elements on the track. How many? How many? Uh, Tifosi, how many people at the track, how many objects, uh, how rich is the surrounding, okay? Shadow resolution, it's at 496, is very high. I would not go in the not recommended ones. It's already good enough. It's the problem of this, um, of this old generation um, graphic engine is the light quality and the lighting, not certainly the shadow resolution. I, in smoke, in smoke generation, I prefer to go to low because the smoke it's not good enough, it's not simulated well enough, and a lot of not good simulated smoke looks not good. A lot of not good is a lot of not good, so I put it at low. Okay, maybe maybe I didn't test that minimum. Maybe a minimum, a minimum is even better. Reflections are good enough at at the at the best 20, 20, uh, 20, 48. and four facet per frame. Okay, this is the resolution of the image that it is uh, rendered as a reflection, and it is the frequency. So how many times is updated? And we consider, let's say, around 1900 meter distant render. This is not impacting. Um, this is not impacting resolution. And you can keep it high, and it is responsible to, to how distant it's something. How how can how something that it is going to be render as a reflection how distant that can be okay from the from the from the car we are driving okay from the place we are setting up the camera it's not um, 
impacting resolution, uh, and sorry, impacting speed, so we can keep it high. And a lot of elements will be considered for, for reflection, okay, for being rendered as a reflection close to the camera. In the post-processing, we want absolutely to pick poor, and we can pick poor, pure candy, one of these two, and um, up to your taste. I am choosing poor here, and the overall quality of the shader is at maximum. It is maximum, okay. The glare, it is the light, the glow of light around emitting light sources, like for example a net light or a tail light, okay, you see high it gets wider. And every time you exaggerate here the glow becomes wider and in my opinion off it's too sharp, I would keep it at low or medium. Medium feels good because you have this wider um, subtle um, faded light around the emitting source. I like it medium. Depth of field uh, quality it isn't maximum. Motion blur I keep it off. Saturation obviously is just how much the color are intense and saturated. I keep it at 95. I don't like too much saturated uh, images. I want. I don't want it hit shimmering. It affects. It is the effect that heat, for example, from an exhaust can have um, uh, in the camera. All right. These waves of heat affects how the how the uh, object behind the heat are rendered in the camera, and I prefer have it in half. It is can be kind of it can be like two and a half percent. I prefer to say that. Okay. You see here it has an effect on the on the, but I don't find it uh, good enough and interesting enough. FXAA must be turned on because the FXAA is the link to all the settings in the custom shader patch. Okay, so this must be turned on at any time. Okay. Sun rays, I do like sun rays. Okay, it's so on or off. I do like them. I like some of this in the image. It's not that costly at all. Mirrors are fine. 256 by 10, 24. A resolution, good enough resolution for me, you know, and uh, as always, it is a 3% moon, and um, it's slightly, it's just slightly better, so I would say, um, let's have a look, this is a 4% heat, and then a 29, 29, 3% heat. I would say on this resolution, high quality is not needed. I find them good enough. This is for virtual reality and other system uh, settings that we are not. Um, okay, interested at the moment. These are the main settings, and I want to save them using the save and then. Save into a file for reference, okay? You can put the name of the genre, racing PCs or whatever. Now we are switching to the custom shader patch. Here it is a mess. The most important things I would suggest are whatever is grayed out, it is um, switched off. And um, I suggest uh, to switch the things are switched off. I suggest you switch them off because some of them are, are really, really uh, costly in terms of frame rates without adding too much to the simulation. Okay, for example, wind screen effects. What does it do? It does affect noticeably uh, FPS and it gives you a better shadow on the 
on the windscreen, a better shadow um, on the interior of the car. And you can see the difference, the shadow is also colored, sometimes it's even too much and the blur of the shadow in, in, in the car is nicer, absolutely. But you don't want to lose 5% for something like this and it is very costly, so in my case, wind, windscreen FX, it's switched off, okay. I pretty much left uh, um, these settings unchanged. Uh, I am using brake effects, which gives uh, a nice, interesting reddish color to the brake of the cars when they are under braking. Okay, and also it gives dynamic wear to the to the brake disc. And of course the lighting, it gets interesting with the heating, as I said. Uh, this is not costly, I kind of uh, prefer to have it this turn on. Um, we have, um, I kept turn on the instrument of the car. Um, we can have slightly improved interior of the uh, on certain cars, okay. Chaser camera is uh, for um, replaying, and you know, if you like to play with a chaser camera, um, chat shortcuts uh, I'm not using, and colors, shadows I also am not using, and it is very costly, so I turned this off. Um, this DXGI, it's more of a technical uh, plugin that allows um, to organize um, the data that is passed to DirectX. Okay, and uh, I thought it would this would be like an improvement or an optimization of what we already had. So I turn. Uh, the uh, the um, let's say the plugin on without actually verifying if it does uh, take too many or gives too many many um, FPS. But uh, the idea is um, to turn to keep it turn on. Extra effects. This is fundamentally turned off. This is a secondary rendering pass allowing to use more visual effects. But I found this to be very ridiculously expensive on the on the FPS, so I decided to turn this off. This might add some extra feeling, reflections, uh, magic in the lighting. Okay. I actually turned on fake shadows that allows to improve the shadows. Um, when the car is jumping, but it's not really any way when the car, um, in, let's let's say it's jumping, but it's also when the when the when the when the car um, is uh, is getting further away from the from the from the asphalt from the ground. I turn on FFP tweaks, first feedback tweaks. I don't like, uh, personally, very. I don't like at all con um, Asato Corsa force feedback and I don't like it with the tweaks and I don't like it without, but I kept it on. Free camera and gamepad, and gamepad I kept switched off, okay. So graphics adjustments. Here is an important one <clears throat> and you want to keep this turned on. What you have here is um, <clears throat> general big improvement in the graphics engine for a bunch of things. One is anti-aliasing, another is the addition of the possibility to use AMD Fidelity FX super resolution which is scaling the image and allowing us to get free FPS at the cost of a little image degradation. I want to use this not in the 
1080p 1920 1080 resolution but from 2560 upward especially in 4k you want to use this since fidelity fx super resolution is a let's say a recent evolved image scaler we can use this it is not though very evolved compared to dlss or fidelity fx 2.0 2.x 2.5 okay and it's not that evolved so i am only using it at ultra or custom quality okay custom is a uh, a very low reduction in in uh, in resolution and so the upscaler has to do a very little job and gives you the best image the more you go down the more the image goes really into the trash into the bin i would not go lower than ultra quality and i personally don't use this below custom okay so um personally but you can use that ultra quality i think ultra is feasible the main problem is in guard rails or in the fences beside the trucks they begin to flicker they begin to need to have artifacts that um, are annoying while you drive so this was things number two thing number two so thing number one was the anti-aliasing that we were going to see later this another thing is how the load quality settings how much the quality of the models car models are reduced as they are further away from the camera you can say i have a huge quality but it's useless right because if the if the model of the car is further away from the camera you are not going to see the the details right and 100 percent is is what i consider the standard for a set of course and there are three true slide two, two main sliders one is for the track and its objects and one another is for the tree uh, sorry three another is for the car and so i keep them slightly below so when the track objects are further away from the camera they their their model the definition of the model decreases a little bit quicker trees as well right and then car as well around 70 80 percent is good if your sensibility and obviously by reducing them the model is uh, requires less um, less uh, computing power from the video card and this is video card stuff but um, according to how you are with the frames all right if you are maxing out your monitor hertz then why keeping them low you can keep them higher even than a hundred percent but in terms of maximizing performance, I will keep them around 80%. Okay. Uh, you can play with these things. If there, are, if you see objects popping up in the cars because the the technology is uh, substituting lower quality with higher quality or higher quality models with lower quality details and models on a car, for example, you want to rise rise this. Okay. But you get the point of what is this controls the quality as the objects are further away. When the objects are close enough to the camera, then the quality is 100%. What a set of course I thought 100% would be okay. We have the post processing anti aliasing. This is very important. I find the CMA 2.0 the best. Uh, I and I have the ultra best quality. There are many algorithms. I don't like FXAA, it's very old. SMAA gets a little bit slow. I find CMAA, which is uh, an Intel technology, uh, the better of the three. 
uh, the better of the four, but mainly there are three technologies. Okay, so I like that. Then we have certain flags to disable certain and add or disable certain um, technologies. This is how I kept them uh, mostly standard and stock. Okay, this is very important tab. I prefer to have the new user interface, and so I added this plugin lighting effects. Uh, adds various cars and truck lights and the problem here is that it is very 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 um, FPS hunger and so I kept this off um, I kept this off neck effects if you like movement of the uh, in-car um, camera, the cockpit camera. I don't like them at all. I don't want any movement in, in such things, so I disable the camera. New AI behavior to hopefully improve the AI driving. And obviously I uh, enjoy the loading screen. Okay, This obviously doesn't have any effect on the uh, frame rates. Nice screenshots. Uh, I don't use because I don't take screenshots. Particles effects is active, but I disable soft particles. First of all, I don't like I don't like how they look. Also, they take a lot of computing power, but I don't like the sparks, and um, I don't like the new smoke and dust. Um, it takes some power, and I find especially the soft objectified particle not developed not sophisticated enough i just as i said i i am enough with uh, a little bit of smoke a low generation maybe even minimal maybe even minimum because this effect in my view either they are really well done or they uh, beside taking away a lot of frames they are not uh, of my taste but I like new flames, fireworks at the end of the race, this kind of stuff. I, 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 um, and new flames, as let me say, and fireworks are active, but also at night and after the finish. Okay. Or oh, only after finish, only after finish. Okay. You don't want it to have a firework when you're driving and then you lose frames and you get distracted. Okay. Solid pieces, third bits of grass, it's not active, I don't like it enough, and then as always it takes a lot of computing power. I do like rains, it's a work in progress, but I do like once in a while to have a look. Um, you can choose the size of the drops from car cameras or first person view, free camera, etc. etc. Fundamentally is non touched. The rain line on the asphalt, I do like it. Reflections, I do like improved interior reflection. Okay, improved interior reflection in the car, I do like this. Shadow at wheels, I do think it adds a little bit of um, realism so it has a smooth shadow um, around the wheels according to the light source okay i do like skid marks here and there uh, don't use smart mirrors smart shadows the extension allow to alter shadow split in general on a peer track basis but sensible shadow must reduce wobbling all right it is improving slightly on the shadow quality um, and I, it's fundamentally untouched i keep it switched on I don't think this is interesting. It's like adjusting the amount of spectators in any given race. Who cares? Tires effects add well as visually deforming and damageable tires. And uh, we, I hardly play with open wheel.
particular, but I think it's uh, interesting and I keep it on. The weather effects. Here it is important to have the weather style be managed by Pure, so you select Pure, okay? Pretty much everything else is on uh, on uh, um, on stock as it was um, uh, imagined by the developer. Windscreen effects. I keep this switched off. As I said, this is affecting the F FPS, um, and so I don't. I don't. This is for triple screen when you enable in graphics adjustment when you have triple screen and enable fidelity effects super resolution you can for example make a different this is very interesting and any simulator should um, um, enable some a feature like this this allows you to have a different quality for the side monitors okay and in fact, on when I play a set of course, I have a lower quality. All right, I have a lower quality on the side monitor, so we gain a, to gain a little bit of speed. Okay, um, VR. It's not the scope. I don't use VR. Okay, more tweaks. Custom render mode. Um, it is not. Uh, uh, something that uh, I uh, that we can have access to. I kept this as it was, and not Logitech music. I don't use these things. Small tweaks, fundamentally, all disabled. All right, and then the taskbar. This is maybe interesting for setting up the taskbar in a, in a set of course uh, to access your applications and, and this is the uh, the few few tweaks I did on the on the stock and then I save the preset and this is it okay so these are my settings hope they can help you in some way and uh, obviously by using this you can have a relationship with uh, the performance I declare in the benchmarks. Um, thanks very much. See you soon. Okay, thanks a lot for being with me. A lot of things obviously and like help the channel if you are still around. Uh, if you have questions, if you have, uh, if you want to leave a comment, please do so. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for being with me. Ciao, ciao.